but first I want to let you know that I honor my parents first. I don't, you're not supposed to honor your grandparents before your parents. You honor your parents first. So I honor my father and my mother first after my wife. Actually, you honor your wife. Really, you honor your wife first. And before that, you really, you honor God and Jesus first. So that is how you do things as a human being. You you put God and Jesus first. Second, growing up are your parents. You honor your parents. And then, for those of us who God brings together as one flesh with a wife, we honor them first. We leave our parents to be at one flesh with our husband or wife. And, and you're there for your children, too, who honor you first and their responsibility. For those of you who are married and have children, if not, you honor your parents and put God first. God is your real heavenly father that comes first. But I honor God before this special guitar that I'm going to show you. <laughs> and I'm going to play it really for the first time in a long time. And here's my dad. He did business. He married my mom who did music and stuff like that. That my grandmother and grandfather did art, music, stuff like that. And they also worked at regular jobs. So, um, and you honor your wife if you get married before your parents. So, and then your gr grandparents after your, uh, here's, here's how it is. God and Jesus first. You put God and Jesus first. Then growing up, you put your parents first after God and Jesus. God and Jesus are always number one. And after your parents, when you get married, for those of us who get married, then you leave your parents to put your wife first, or if you're a woman, to put your husband first. And then you put your wife first, and you still honor your parents, but then they're after you and your wife. You and your wife are first after God. So does that make sense? God is first, Jesus. Then growing up, it's your parents. Then you leave your parents to be at one flesh with your wife, and you, and then, then it's God Jesus, your wife, and your parents, and your children, your parents and your children, and then it's others, other family and friends after that, and before other family and friends, likely the ones who are top in the list of, of, of all those other people, family and friends, are your grandparents, they're very important, my grandfather gave me this guitar, he gave me this really special guitar, and there's this cool, amazing stuff in it. This was his band. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you who he was in the band. That was in the 20s or 1918 or 20s when he was a little kid. First, I'm going to call Danica. Well, let, let me show you my grandfather. This is a picture of my grandfather's band when he was a child before he had a big orchestra himself that was like way more people than this and he was the center and he went on tour it was named after him that's him in the far right that's him my grandfather it was really carl martinez and they they gave him the name carl martinez when he came here from ellis island they pretended you know maybe he's some uh, Puerto Rican, and they gave him the name martinez and he kept it and he and he he kept with that name his entire you know with his family and, and my grandmother kept the name too. And then he died. But this was when he was a little kid or a kid. Before that, he was on stages in vaudeville and uh, in Sicily, they played music. And there, I think that's his brother. I think that's his brother, but I don't know. His brother played saxophone, but that's that doesn't look like his brother. This looks like his brother playing a different instrument when they were kids and his brother died when he was young. And this is him. Named after some other guy, Charles De Primus. I guess that's that guy. And then eventually he had his own band later. This was him playing banjo. I think I have his banjo. I think I have that banjo or one he had later in the 60s. And that's my grandfather when he was like, I guess, a kid. A teenager, not even a teenager, 14, 12, something like that. So here's the guitar that he played on. He eventually went on tour. He eventually went on tour and played music before he turned 30. And when he was 30, or about 30, he came back home to New York and, my, and his parents owned restaurants. 
and um, he got some help from his mom and he went back to college. He saw some stupid guy when he was back in New York from going on tour as a musician all those years. He had a big orchestra named after himself and he saw some stupid guy. Hey, Joe Fa, my name's Joe Fa. <laughs> and he said, and he said, what are you doing, Joe Fa? And he said, uh, 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 I went to college. <laughs> and he was this, he was one of the stupid people and he went to college and my grandfather was like, wow, he went to college. And so my grandfather went back to college and he got a degree and he, um, he, um, but he, he really graduated high school really early, like when he was like 12 or 14, something like that. Cause the schools are different in Sicily and they taught him really early. And when he came here, he graduated high school really early, but then he went back to college <coughs> when he was 30 and he became an engineer and that paid his bills. And I didn't want to be like that. I didn't quite understand. And I didn't understand, wait a second, he might not have been a big famous A-list big movie star, but he really did it. He really went on tour. This was him as a child in one of the bands he was in. There, That's him. My mom's dad. He married Norny. And um, and there's all this stuff in here. I think this is his handwriting. I think this is his handwriting. I don't know. Eh, I think that's my mom that wrote that. I don't know. And there's some of these picks. I don't know what that is. But this pick, there's a special pick he played with himself. Here it is. Here's one of his picks. He played with himself. It says Gibson on it. He had Gibsons. He liked Gibson. And this guitar happens to be a Harmony. This is one of the guitars he had, Harmony, I think from 1962. I don't know what brand it is, but it's, it was his that he'd play with a lot when he was playing electric. <coughs> so I got it. He gave it to me. He had other guitars. He had like the Stradivarius of, of guitars. He had a, um, but it wasn't worth as much as the Stradivarius. Um, it was a, I think it's called a D'Angelico. D'Angelico was like the ninth one they ever made, and he made it just for my grandfather. He knew him in person. He they they knew he they knew one another, and um, so he made it for him. But that was worth a lot, and somebody I think stole it. I think somebody stole it. It was a really special guitar. My I think it was worth hundreds. I I think it was worth hundreds of that. I think it was worth a lot, maybe like a hundred thousand dollars. But my mom says no, you know. But I think maybe it was by by it, you know he got it in the 1930s. He got it in the 1930s and 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 kept it all those years. And finally, it was a really special guitar. So, and he had other guitars, but this one's like not worth near as much, you know. But it's special to me. Special to me, you know. This guitar I got for like 140 dollars. But it plays really well. It has a thin neck and it plays well. It's okay. And um, this one, my grandfather played himself. He wore it out right here, playing it. It looks good. It's 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 really cool. It's it's besides being cool, it's not cool. It smells good. It smells like the old instruments. This case has that smell. And I'm gonna close it because I don't want the smell to. Get out, it smells like those old instruments. It smells really good. And that's the guitar, and I got it from him. I finally got it from my grandmother's house. And I'm gonna call Danica, but I honor my parents first before my grandfather. So there's my dad. Okay, and I got this cool new Alexa, video Alexa for um, my birthday. Danica, oh, Alexa, call Danica's Alexa. Calling Danica's Alexa devices. The contact is not available. Would you like to leave a voice message on their devices? Yes. What's the message? Hi, Danica. I love you. I love the kids. 
please come home. I got the house ready for you. You can live here. There's plenty of space. We can start a big, happy family and follow God and Jesus. And it's the best place you'd ever want to live for following God and Jesus and being good and for having a happy, good life again. And a good life, of course. And it may not always be happy. I understand it gets, you know, there are ups and downs and stuff, but it's it can be pretty good. Okay, I love you. I love the kids. Dear God and Jesus, please be with you on earth. Amen. Bye. Okay, Alexa, that's the message. Please send. Who do you want to send it to? Danica. What's the message for Danica? I just sent it to you. I love you, Danica. I love the kids. Please, God and Jesus, be with you. Amen. Bye. Got it. Should I send it? Yes. Sending from John. Okay. I got him these, these uh, shorts and stuff. The kids. Well... Really nice day out here. I gotta throw this stuff off. There's some gross stuff on here. There's some gross stuff on here. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this on the outside for a while. It's a really good view, and I gotta take a, a little bit of a brick. Oh. You can use this time to go take a bathroom break and I'll play the guitar. And I'm gonna, it's gonna take a little while. I'm gonna do some stuff. We'll be right back. This old cat food that's been here in a while. I didn't realize it looked like this. Right. No, I don't want to talk that stupid way. And there was this other guy who my grandfather knew who started a how to play guitar class, uh, uh, videos in class and stuff for, uh, not videos, but um, he was the, he was the, he was the coffin. He was, he was worse than the coffin. Um, he was a, uh, um, 
They called him Larry Volpe. Larry Volpe. My grandfather knew in the 40s and later. And um, his name was Larry Volpe. And he talked like that, Larry. And um, he, he tried to make a bunch of money at teaching people how to play guitar and act like he was an expert, but he wasn't even good. He wasn't that good. He wasn't that good. Larry Volpe. And um, so my my grandfather got along with other people, cop phones, different people. And um he did go along with them. Uh, Johnny D'Angelico and people like that. And um, they never became a big, like, A-list, somebody like Elvis. But he did get kind of famous, and he toured playing music in a big orchestra named after him, my grandfather. And um, then he came home, and he was like, he wanted to start a family. He became an engineer. And then um, he built some kind of big buildings and stuff. Well, he was the engineer, one of the engineers. And then he paid his bills with that. And sometimes you get to stay at home and not work for a while in between projects and be there for the kids and stuff. But he worked hard. And my grandmother worked too. She was a good artist and she ended up teaching school the whole time. Kind of humbled herself to be a teacher at a public school. And they're good people. And he didn't really want to get to do much more of the um, music, he already did it. So I'm gonna show you um, some of the, um, I'm gonna show you his guitar. But he was maybe kind of famous. I mean, he, he went on tour until he was like, until he was about 30, or 30 something, 30. And he was like, he didn't want to do it anymore. He wanted to stay at home and have a family. Beautiful day out. I swept up. I swept up. <coughs> this was pretty, uh, doesn't get any water through it. It's, it's good. It just, you know, um, it can look a little better. <sighs> Out here. <sighs> uh, I can redo that so it looks like new. That's another thing you got to work at. It takes work to do that. A lot of work to do it. So, works like it is now. So, um, here's my grandfather. Here's his, here's his pick. He played until his hands bled, he said. And there he is when he was a, a young man. This is not Photoshop. This is like some, they found the original picture of my mom or somebody took a picture of it and Xeroxed it. <sighs> Unless one of them hired, a, they didn't hire a Photoshop. He's a kid, look. He was like 15 or 14 or 12. And this was one of his first bands. It was named after that guy, I guess. And then he owned it. And then when he was older, in his 20s or 18 or something, he had a big orchestra, bigger than this, named after himself. <laughs> he had it named after himself. <sighs> so, and he, and in his later years, the last 30, 40 years of his life, 40 years or something, I don't know, or 20 years, he played this guitar when he played in when he played an electric and he had other guitars but this is the one and that i got this is the one that i got and he had another really special one that was like for my uncle and i guess i don't know what happened to that exactly but i'm gonna close I'm gonna close this because i swept up some stuff so um um 
I guess I'll play his guitar, but I want to take a break. I want to take a rest. I don't know. Um. I'm going to play it. I'm going to come back. We're going to take a break. No, it's not Chinese. Oh, he did. He was aware of Chinatown. My grandfather. Because Chinatown used to be Little Italy a long time ago in the 20s, uh, the, t the 19, you know. He, he was born in 1909, my grandfather. And they moved to America from Sicily um, when he was, you know, they came to Ellis Island, I guess in the, like around 1918 or something, or 1914, or I don't know. He was a little kid. Oh, he was already 12. He already graduated high school in Sicily, really young. He was like a genius. They put him on a stage and he played music with his brothers and sisters. They had a lot of brothers and sisters. And, um, my grandfather. And when he came here, I guess this was a little bit after he got here. This must have been 1922 or something like that. And that's him. That's him right there in the far, on your far right. That's in somebody else's band. They actually had his own big orchestra named after himself. They went on tour. So it was about 30. And then he he became an engineer and settled down and had a family. And um, he still played music sometimes. And this, this is this was one of his electric guitars he had. And he had a really good D'Angelico that D'Angelico Johnny D'Angelico made for him as his ninth guitar. I think in 1932 or the 30s or something like that. <coughs> and that was a really special guitar. And some I don't know what happened to it. And um, so. Uh, but this one was his electric that he played with. He never, I never saw him have big amplifiers when he played. He played with these these guys in a small band, loud enough to play with the drums when he was older. But maybe some, maybe I don't know if they ever, you know, when he was younger and they played in the big band like like the jazz kind of stuff orchestra that he had in the '30s. I think in the 30s, maybe into the 40s, but the 30s, 1930s, he did he played music on tour. And then he settled down in New York in Brooklyn, where his family lived, I think. And he um he became an engineer. But he liked Chinatown. They would go to Chinatown sometimes and eat Chinese food. Because when he first came to America, when he first came to America, it was called it was called um, Little Italy. That was the original Little, Little Italy, what became Chinatown in like 1920s, the 1920s or something. 
So they liked Chinatown. They'd go there and they'd eat the really authentic Chinese food. They used to have the really old ancient Chinese people who came to America there. It was interesting, like the Big Trouble in Little China movie that was based on how it really was in Chinatown in New York City, I think. And so we would sometimes, even growing up growing up to visit my grandparents, we'd go into Chinatown sometimes in New York City and get their authentic, really authentic Chinese food, <coughs> or authentic Chinese food. And um, um, because it used to be a little ailing when they first came up, came here. My grandfather <coughs> died it was like 89 in the 90s. I think he was 89 in the 90s. So he he moved, he was born in 1909. He would have been 100 something had he lived. And my grandmother lived to be 100, Noni. She was also Sicilian and Italian. And um, she lived to be 100. She lived to be 100. She died uh, sometime a few years ago. She died. And I'm gonna play with his guitar a bit. And his guitar. His guitar. But I, I don't know how I'll play it exactly. I don't know if it's appropriate to play in this amp or not. It's a Marshall amp. <laughs> and it has has his original strings. I hope nothing happens to it. It's up to God. Um, I can tune it. Has his original strings that he has his skin on it that he played with these old strings and his skin and stuff is is on it and, I, and I, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna and I had to, oh I didn't add an E string. I have to tune it too. I'm gonna get an E string somewhere. I think I already brought it here somewhere. There's an E string right there. I'm gonna put an E string on it. Where is his E string? Where's the, well, I'm gonna use it. See, the E string was broken on it when I got it. I just got it, I haven't played it with all the strings on it yet. I did play it for like a few seconds. I tuned it a little and played it for a few seconds. But this will be special, I'll, I'll play it for the first time with all, all the strings. Oh, here it is. So this was his band one of his bands he had a lot of different bands he had a really big orchestra eventually that was him when he was only like 12. i'm trying to show his face maybe it was 14 something like that i don't know where'd the string go the string disappeared And there's a guy named Larry Volpe. Larry Volpe. Larry Volpe. And he was like, that's how kind of he was. And he tried to like sell his work. And it wasn't that good. But, um, it's okay to sell your work. And, you know, um, that's okay, but he tried to make a business out of it that was like not really truthful as much. Larry Volpe. But maybe he was okay too, not as bad. Maybe he made it to heaven somehow, I don't know. But they're not there yet. We're asleep, we're gonna get to heaven one day. But that's how, one way to say is, you know, maybe he made it to heaven. But um, here's an E-string, a high E-string that apparently broke. I'm very fortunate I haven't been broke been poor not really I had to really save money though at times too I don't know I used to worry more but now I think I'm okay with that you never know but I work hard I think you know in our family we work really hard
hips, pick ups, and pick ups. Putting a strain on it. I guess it's from the 60s, early 60s or 58 to something. I don't know. Not in particular like some really valuable guitar, but it's special to me. It's an earthly thing, you know, it's just a, it, it's just a thing, you know, it belongs on earth. It belongs on earth, you may as well. And it's a harmony, you know. It's not like a Gibson Les Paul. It's not like a Gibson uh, really good quality Epiphone worth like $4,000 or ten or $20,000. This could maybe one day be worth $4,000 if I live long enough. I, I think it's, it may not be now. I don't even know how much it's worth now. I guess I'll leave that. But it's not the value of it that is important. It's that um, it was my grandfather. It's the, it's the sentimental value. But it's just a thing. As long as we're alive on Earth, it's, it's kind of special. My grandfather gave it to me. Okay. I don't want to mess this thing up. I don't want to mess this guitar up. I don't want to do anything wrong to it. Ah. Just from the 60s or about then. Pretty sure it's older than the 70s. It's my grandfather's. Putting the string in, putting your string on. I don't take forever to do it, but okay, we get the idea. Putting the string on. Be careful with the thing, with the guitar. <laughs> you kind of pull on the string as you're tightening it to get it loose and stuff where where it's um here and so it doesn't break and tune it a little more and before it gets way too tight you kind of pull on it and subtly kind of in case it wasn't like wrapped around way too tight in some weird place you kind of do this to get it loose and stuff and kind of pull it tighter so it's
the pick. I should have actually played out with a pick a little bit. Maybe I'd be able to play a little bit better. Alexa, play music by John Birmingham. Music by John Birmingham is only available with Amazon Music Unlimited. Here's a station based on Alexa, John Bur stop. Alexa, subscribe to Amazon Music Unlimited on all my devices. You already have Amazon Music Unlimited on another device. By upgrading, you'd have unlimited on all supported devices, including Amazon, this Echo Show. Alexa, you can please upgrade. It's two dollars more a month. You already have Amazon Music Unlimited on another device. By upgrading, you'd have unlimited on all supported devices. Take the maybe I can push it in a little bit. 
unless somebody glued it that way. And you know, I don't know why he had his E string, his low E string like that. No, because I know why. He liked playing it with his thumb. He liked playing it with his thumb. Whew. Okay, he had it that way for a reason.
Alexa. The fuck is the matter with you? <laughs> Sorry. What is it doing? Alexa. Uh, play John Birmingham music. Here's what I found. <laughs> Alexa, play John Birmingham music on Here's you. Here's what I found. Here's what I found. Alexa, I want to play some cool, really different solo. Maybe discover some new melodies and uh, <laughs> things that have not quite been played before. Here's what I found. I kind of did one the first time I picked up this guitar and I didn't record it. <laughs> I played this um the the lead the the lead playing guitar. It wasn't like the fastest ever, but it was the, the choice of melody as I played it came out like. Wow, that was like really unexpected. <laughs> it's like when you just start playing things and it's like a little outside of the standard um, scales or whatever, but it's just a guitar thing. It's not, you know, there are more important things, loved ones. I, I don't have any desire to try to, you know, that's not my main concern. I'd like to be there. I'd like my kids to be here. Like all... I'd like all three of them. I'd like Rowan, Ivan, and Ayla. And then, maybe by a miracle, she'd see, oh my gosh, I'm without my kids. I gotta get there. And she'd really love me a lot and really start talking to me a lot. And maybe for once, I can neglect one of her email messages or something. Instead of me suffering all these years, Sending her 10,000 something emails with her keeping the kids to herself, all the love to herself. That sucked. It's a miracle I didn't kill myself. And still, some fuck wants to break my tooth for it. I don't get it. It's an anxiety thing. Like they're going to hurt my tooth. Because I wanted to kill myself every day, crying every day in agony and suffering for hours, every day for years. That's how uncontrollable the suffering was that I looked up every way to kill myself, you know, hanging, um, slitting your, these veins here, cutting, I didn't want to have a violent death of doing that, I, I almost did one time, well, I went to the store to get cigarettes, so I could just cut myself and let it bleed while I was bleeding out, and finally you did smoke a cigarette one time, <laughs> there's no way, you know how violent that is, having to cut into that self so, no way, it'll suck, you'd be suffering, it'd feel awful, you probably live anyway, and then they have to cut off your hand. Then this hand wouldn't work. It's horrible. Um, who would want that? Who would do that stupid stuff to them? So that's why it's awful. So I was like, no, I, I didn't really do it. I didn't do any of it. I've never hurt myself. Unless I was scratching, like, um, I was scratching, um, I don't know what this came from, the pets, not the pets' fault, leaving the door open for the cat or something. And some little bugs came in, but it's not their fault. I would have left it open anyway. I don't know. And like that's not enough that I had to suffer without all the love, without getting to feel okay. Like when I had her and, and the kids, I could be myself. But maybe I'm not supposed to. Maybe somebody else knows better than I do. Maybe God knows better than I do. Or maybe I'm supposed to just go out. Maybe I'm supposed to go out there and uh, try to enjoy it enough to where it's not like, I don't know. Alexa, play music by John Bur oh, uh, Birmingham. Alexa, stop. Alexa, subscribe to Amazon Music on all my devices for the $7.99 a month. Searching Amazon Music. Somebody called on the other line. Hey, somebody called me over. I've been eating a little heavier. You can tell some of it under under my eyes. I don't know. Um, I had to because I I was vi a little bit vitamin D deficient again from being 
out here alone by myself all the time. This looks pretty good. I got this kind of, I got this ready. It looks good. I put that light there. Um, I got the lighting set up on my face for this. Looking okay. And I had to put makeup on because I was like, I've been eating heavier because I had to get enough vitamin D. I had this entire thing. I know how to not have too much. Yeah, I should count these up. It sucked. It sucked being vitamin D deficient. <sighs> I got sick three times again. And I was having 1,200 milligrams a day from being indoors and not getting enough sunlight. And this Alexa is a little bit funny. Alexa. Oh. Go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's on YouTube already. Alexa, stop. Here. It's on YouTube. Ugh. I know I have the rights to this. I know this is me again. Put somebody else in it. What's on this lens? Oh, I had to wipe the lens. Yeah, I showed it really high quality. This actually looks a lot better when I came in here. But it blurred it, of course. This actually is really awesome in here. I can record music. I can record original music now. I finally got it already, but guess what? My um my kids take precedence. They're, you know. People out there think, oh, they're a president, a president. No, it's being there and showing them God and Jesus. <laughs> it's being there and showing them God and Jesus, kindness to others, being with them and not trying to make them the biggest person on earth. I understand that now. So let me have my kids back. Give me my kids right now, you kidnapper. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I messed up. Nobody's a kidnapper. That hurts somebody to say. That hurts somebody's feet. It's like an anxiety. It hurts somebody's feet to call them that. Just got to get along with them. So I had this vitamin D. I think this looks really good in here. It's ready to film. I got all my stuff ready to film and record. Record the music first while it's filming. Um, I got all my stuff ready finally. I was working on my house. I did work downstairs too. So now I can finally um, get my kids here to play music and record music. <clears throat> I guess, but how do you get them here? So I'm gonna go. I was gonna play music on here. to play a lead guitar with. But I get, uh, who is this? Get away from me, that guy. Come on, oh. Hey, that's good. <sighs> I was gonna play. I don't know, cause you want your foot. If it, you want people to buy your pop fidget toys. I don't know why. I guess that's why. Where's the, oh, he <laughs> he, my original art video. Alexa, Alexa, volume all the way up. Ish. It's going to play a song and I'm going to play a solo with it. Well, it's supposed to play a song. I don't know what it's doing. I thought that's a good Alexa. No, Rowan's my son. I'm the father of Rowan and Ivan. 
hey, did you watch Danica's channel and then you started your own business of making stuff? <laughs> I'm the dad of Roman. This is his great grandfather's guitar, and he, my grandfather, and he, and he gave it to um me. I think the lighting is not the best on me, but that's okay. but I don't care. I like to play the thing. I like to press play. Here's what I found. Play the video. Uh, I'm going to try to get it to play my song. That I want it to play. Dee da dee da dee da dee. Typing in John Birmingham art on YouTube. You see, the world has no! changed. No! <laughs> no, I'm sorry. We used to yell about, we used to talk about Stephen. Stephen was one of, one of my son Rowan's favorites. Rowan and Ivan, they knew about Stephen. He talked like this, no, to his parents, and he didn't want it. He was like some kid on YouTube. I like the volume all the way down. Need to say, I'm not talking about Hey, how's it going? This is okay. John Birmingham. Oh, this is good. Sure of my original art. This is for Ronan and Ivan and the play the church. Age is probably 16 go. to 19. And um, it was at my high school and at some of the colleges. Where I didn't know if I was going to do art as a career or something, so I took some art classes and then got into filmmaking and music. So here, here it is. Here's my art. This is my first painting that I really just was the most happy with, more I'm than anything I'd ever done. back there and it looks a little funny because um uh i'm about to take my shirt off and it's weird because he's like right there <laughs> oh my gosh back there and it looks a little funny because um uh i'm about to take my shirt off and it's weird because he's like right there <laughs> oh my gosh oh. what did i do with the pig how can i play the Okay. 
bump and it's weird because he's like right there. Okay, it's ready to play. Now he's Listerine. Looking for the pit. Um, I like to get my kids something meaningful to God there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Song, the previous song that I, I have the rights to this song that I played, I made up those chords. Those are chords that no one ever played before that I played, and, and I played this song, this little solo to it. That's something cool you can put in the background of give the fuck. Oh, make it 42,000 views. Shit. You know what that is? $200. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna 
turn this off. Well, that was me playing my grandfather's guitar. <clears throat> I did get 100 million views of videos I created. And I acted in, well, mostly 100, about 80 to 100 something million, million not a billion views. But Danica, uh, Danica got 501 million. And Ronan and I, we got about 501 million. So that's half a billion or something. It's 501 million. <laughs> and I got like 100 million. Well, I've been working at something since 1980 something. You know, as a little kid, when my grandfather first taught me how to play guitar, I was three or four years old, this little guitar. <laughs> um, that's pretty good for working at something that long. You know, I, I, that's not the life I wanted, to get that little for 40 years of working at something. That's not what I wanted. You know, if that means you better get to working <laughs> something and make more money, that's what, that's what 100 million views is. It's not enough. You know what 501 million views is? Well, she still has an income coming in, so that's, what, that's why it's okay. <sighs> hard to do and to have felt like the last one of the least of everyone in social situations where I felt like I had to do something like that <coughs> and it's okay I'm happy with how it is I'm happy with how it is now I'm pretty good I'm pretty happy I did okay I have my legs I have my arms <laughs> legs hot <huh>? legs <laughs> I'm trying to tell you the cowardly lion <laughs> If you ever look, have you ever noticed James Hetfield when he has a mustache these days? Sometimes he looks like the cowardly lion. I think he messed up a little. Like he, he doesn't want to face his responsibility at home with his wife and kids or something like that. God knows about, and he keeps going out and doing the thing he likes to do, playing music on stage with all those people. <laughs> and he's like really supposed to be a good dad, really supposed to be a good dad and be at home. And so um, God had him look like the cowardly lion. He looks like the Cowardly Lion, James Hetfield sometimes, when he has a mustache. I think he, maybe he can shave it off and doesn't always look that way. I don't know. But it's there, I know there are pictures they took of him. And I don't know if he was aware of it or not, but he looked like the Cowardly Lion. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful I didn't have that much of a problem with it. I played a clown. That's my big 63 million view video, well, 63 million videos of clown, but it was never an issue. And it was like, you know, that wasn't a problem that much, but somehow I played a clown and did that. So it wasn't, it wasn't like a worry that I was a clown, but sometimes I think it's inappropriate to joke, you know, and I really do my best God's work. And somebody keeps looking right here. Somebody, it's like feeling like, guess what? See this, you can't tell what this looks like. This is a dark color. If I was wearing big khaki pants or any pants, like other people out there, you can see the same. This would look the same. You couldn't tell really what's in there, but there's something there. So there's no reason for it to go to a penis. You know, um, this is legs. You know, feel comfortable at it. I'm not trying, not trying to look good in my private parts. That might be what somebody else is doing. It's probably because the light was not on my face. And it was like here. But I filmed a thousand. I filmed a a few thousand times um, what other people did who took their time and got the lighting right for their little eight minute video that's so big. You know, their eight minute video, I have 10,000 times as long videos as, you know, when you add up my videos, they're, they're long. You know, they're like feature length. I have like 40 or 100, 100 feature length videos, maybe 100 feature length videos or 40, something like that, or a lot. They don't have that, and they don't have my actual feature films, which are real movies, which are real movies, you know, entire movies, because I worked that hard. While they were on set of some movie, hanging out, trying to, you know, fit in with people and be social, that guy's a jerk, let's get him kicked off. Let's talk to them on our stupid CVs so we can fit in and 
let's let's make that guy the loser and get him kicked off of the movie because <laughs> we're workers of unrighteousness and try to look really good in our face and body. He's the unpopular one. Or, the, or in the classroom, how they made the, the those kids made fun of kids in the classroom. How they made fun of those kids, and then you got that strong C because. <laughs> They made fun of me for being little and small, and look, see how big I am now? See? <laughs> and see that they don't make fun of you anymore. They want to kick sand in your face like it was 1962, and now they don't do it anymore because you're the biggest, strongest one, see? So all you have to do is get strong, and you can be, you know, a big actor in things that I did too, like you can. And because why would anyone else want to do it different than Arnold Schwarzenegger? You get big, strong, looks good here. When you lose enough weight and you're not having to do this, like, uh, yo, man, I'm fat. Yo, <laughs> yo, I'm, I'm, I'm fat. <laughs> and you don't like this. And you don't like this because you don't look fat and you're trying to pretend, you know, walking down the halls doing this the whole time. You don't walk this kid that did this and do the high, walk down the halls doing this and do this on the stomach, you know. It's not fat, he didn't pull it away from his stomach so it didn't stick to his fat. Yo, man, I'm big and fat. <laughs> some kid did that in my junior high. I walked down the hall doing this, like he might smack some kid in the face. He was like really big and tall and he was kind of fat. He was like, yo, it's, and, and he do this with it. And, and he was also doing this the whole time, pulling the, pulling the um, shirt away from his fat. <laughs> He's pulling the shirt away from his bad so it didn't stick to his bad stomach. <laughs> and he walked down the halls. <laughs> he might like smack some kid in the head or something because his arms were doing this the whole time. Yo, man, I'm doing this the whole time and do this and you want to pull the shirt away from his <laughs> But he would, I don't know. But I kind of did that too. I kind of pulled the, my shirt away from my fat so it didn't look fat. <laughs> Walk down the hall and doing it. Walk down the hall and doing this. Because he was so big, he was like tall. People were afraid of him because he was like really big and tall. <coughs> but um, he was okay. I didn't talk to him that much as a friend, but I talked to his sister. I got along with his sister. <coughs> I try to not make fun of people like that, but um, I guess I even kind of. Made fun of some people less fortunate than me a little bit. Or I thought they were. But they were making fun of me too, so I don't know. This is a long ago. It's okay. I think he started a family. He's like a good guy. He he dresses in like nice good clothes and but for him, you know, he, he started a family with the kids or whatever. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. That's my grandfather's guitar. He didn't joke that much. He would say, are you joking? He'd say, are you joking? About people when they, he didn't like what they're saying. He'd say, are you joking? He really did, my grandfather. And now they've got the joke. They think the Joker's a bad guy. This was his band when he was really young. Well, this was one of his bands when he was young. 
Um, that's him. That's him. He was playing a banjo in that one. I think that's his brother. And that maybe his brother's clarinet or I don't know. But for he, his brother was playing a violin. I think that's his brother, but I'm not sure. Somebody else's band. But then he had his own band later. And this is a guitar. I played it. Nothing really, really amazing this time. But some kind of amazing... Maybe, I don't know. It was okay stuff that I played on it, but nothing really, really amazing when I played it. This guitar, but this guitar is really amazing. I'm saying the music I played today was not that amazing, but this guitar, I think, has, has the potential that I can do that kind of stuff. And I see what he did now with this. He moved this a little bit that way and glued it down so he could play this with his thumb. Like this. <gasps> so he can play this like this. Ding, 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 ding. And have his thumb easier to play. Or better to play for him the way he played. So I can adjust that because it's mine now, I guess. You know, because I want to play it more often as my guitar. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. Well, I put an E string on it. So it has all the strings and I played it. And I found that new thing that I can do. It's not, you know, the most important. And I really did some work downstairs where I'm going to go. And I thought this looked cooler in here. I got all the stuff ready to film. I put a new light up. <laughs> I don't know why. I vacuumed the floor. I cleaned up around here a little bit. And I was eating these vitamin D3 because I got low on vitamin D again. <clears throat> I ate all these, and I know, I know that you can have too much vitamin D, and I've researched it a lot, and I've read studies, I have read articles on it, and I'm not going to have too much. Um, a doctor who's, who I know suggested 10,000 milligrams, or 10, not milligrams, I'm sorry, that would be vitamin C. 3,000. Uh, he suggested 3,000 of vitamin C milligrams and 10,000 international units of vitamin D3. So, um, this, shit, this shit sucks. They fucked it up. Sorry, no offense. Makes you have a fat, bloated stomach now. I don't know what they did to it. Are the ones that I got. No offense, but some of the rock stars were really good. And then they added that thing on the top of it to show, oh, it's the messed up one like the rest of them or something. I don't know. Not really. It's like not my favorite. Maybe they have some of them are good. I'm not sure. But the ones that I got made my stomach bloated and made me look fat. I, the opposite of, the, of how, what caffeine's supposed to do. And then when I switched to regular coffee, I looked amazing again. I don't know what they did to it. I like to tell everyone about it. Don't get that crap. It does not make you look like a rock star, that's for sure. I got a bunch of them one day. The guy showed up, and then all the ones that I got, like he thought was he, he thought I was going to try to be a rock star and be really skinny <laughs> and lose weight. And that was kind of my idea. And it made me bloated anytime I drank those. And the ones that didn't have summer something on the top of it were still good. The, the, the original formula, the original, the original rock star energy drinks. But then I ordered them again, the original ones, and they put that thing on the top and made them make your stomach, well, they made my stomach bloated and feel awful. And <laughs> it looked awful. It was like defeated the purpose of drinking the caffeine. And um, it made me look heavy when I had had no food. I never had that from caffeine. Really weird. I don't know what they put in their, I don't know what they put in their, um, this one, not as good when they added that summer thing on the top to label it like that's the one that, you know, makes you look bad because it had to, for political reasons or whatever. I don't know, get it. But maybe they'll have some good ones again. I don't know. It's like they all were all full.
And then I'm gonna go. Hello, hello, hello. Singing into the microphone. Hello, hello. Yeah, do something to hook it up. You know how little this stuff in here is without without my loved ones. It's it's like the tiny speck of dust that God says is um what all money on earth is worth in heaven. That's about how it feels. But there it, there's a lot more that this feels okay because of my parents. Because my parents are really special to me. And something about my relationship with my parents and working with them or working at their kind of work to get this stuff um, made it like it was okay and felt okay. And it's really the love from others that makes you feel okay. We don't really know it or understand, but um, when we try to go out on your own and turn your back on those really special people, wow, it can get pretty bad. But I never turned my back on any of them. I thought they'll always be there. It'll always be okay. <laughs> Somehow Danica got annoyed and... I don't know what she's doing there in Texas. It's, I guess it's... <laughs> I guess it's... I don't know why. Well, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm a gay man. <laughs> I'm a gay man. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. No. Okay. I don't know why this looks like that. I must have rubbed my nose. Um, okay, I'm gonna go. Um, bye. Um, I'm gonna go. Bye. Dear God and Jesus. Dear God and Jesus. Uh, dear God and Jesus, please be with us. Help us to do your work on earth. Um, help us to be kind to others and get along with people, even when they're different and they may have a different religion or, or, uh, they think they do, but they really all believe in God and Jesus. They know it's real or they believe in God and they will believe in Jesus after death because Jesus is very real. <coughs> uh, that's what it's really all about. God and Jesus. And, um, some of them, by some miracle, um, make it into heaven without believing in Jesus. But it is extraordinarily unlikely. However, it's I think it may be possible, but it's just, that's not the way. When you know God and Jesus, um, when you follow and believe in God and Jesus, that's the way to heaven. And to be on earth, to have a better, more enjoyable, more okay life on earth. Uh, kindness to others, kind to others, forgiving others when they're mean to you, not being led into temptation when you're by yourself or with others, not being led into the wrong temptation, suffering or feeling sorry for or repenting, which I don't have to anymore, so I don't really say repent as much anymore, but feeling sorry for um, the, uh, the sin that we did which I've done plenty of for many years alone. So I think maybe it's okay for me to go out there more and enjoy things, um, but I don't know. I'll see how it goes. I gotta see, maybe I'm gonna take off for winter. Maybe I'm gonna go for um, somewhere. And um, so, um, uh, so, Uh, I'd like to be with my wife and kids. I don't know if she's my wife. I don't know what I'm supposed to call her. I think she's my wife. I don't believe in remarrying unless <clears throat> there's a real biblical reason for the divorce and God wanted you to not be with that person anymore. But I think I'm sp still supposed to try to continue trying to be with Danica and maybe by some miracle she'll be like, oh, okay, and then it'll be okay again. <clears throat> it says in the Bible, well, God is against divorce, and it's, and He says to try to make it work almost, you know, 
it, it, you almost always have to make it work. But there, because of our sin on earth, because of the hardness of, because of, because of people's sin on earth, um, divorce does exist and sometimes it may be okay, but, um, you got to try to make it work. And that's my own thing that I'm talking about for people who have been, I'm not talking, I'm not, I don't believe in divorce. I don't believe in divorce, but other people, that's for other people. I was thinking about somebody else and I hope they're okay even though they maybe got a divorce already, but you're supposed to forgive the person with your with and try to make it work um, and figure out what the problem is. Are they putting their career first? Did they, are they uh, driven by, were they driven by a fear? Somebody call them white trash. Did somebody call them white trash in the sixties and they thought they had to prove how rich they are and, you know, blame others for being trash and stuff. And like, it, it got, did it, was that a problem? Is that, was that something real that I've had to, uh, uh, I've been able to think about while you were, um, while they were holding my uh, kids there, wife and kids there. And, uh, you know, is, is that what the problem was with that? Uh, I don't know. But I don't know if that's true or not. Cause I can go see him now. I can go see him and hang out with them all now. I guess I, I fly in a plane there. Um, stay at a hotel probably. And talk to her and then say, okay, you can see the kids. She said I could stay at her house and she'll go to her mom's house. And I can stay at her house with the with the kids and she'll go to her mom's house. So I guess she trusts me enough to do that. But then I wanted to talk to her about it more and really get her talking to me a lot more. And really okay. And then I can just show up and stay at her house with all of them. And I don't need to have sex or anything like that. I can wait for that. Um. Well, I'm going to go. Somebody was writing on here. I don't know if it's right for me to check what it said. <clears throat> Might be okay. Wow. Well, I'm gonna go. People commented and stuff. <clears throat> I think it's kind of wrong to film the little Mayan assistant man. I want to be with my kids and like to be with my kids in real life. I'm not a wannabe. Um, I, uh, funny, maybe the Mayan man, maybe that's what I am, a wannabe. If somebody has a, an assistant, you know. Um, okay, bye. Well, I'd like to get my wife and kids back, so I'm going to try to get them. <laughs> Maybe somebody watching this is an Islamic person. What do you think of that? <laughs> okay. Bye. I believe in God and Jesus. Um, Praise the Lord, follow God and Jesus, <coughs> do God's work on earth, um, be kind to others, try to not be led into temptation, don't, don't be tricked into sin that we don't have to do, that we think is important to get to these stupid goals that we think are so important, not, not worth being mean ever. It's not ever worth being mean, you gotta kinda let go of those things and realize, okay, we've got enough, maybe, um, Calm down, um, 
eat some food or something to calm down and not worry about that. But really, when you have God and Jesus, you can be at peace with God and Jesus. You can have an inner peace and calm and not worry about things that might be hurting your your body or other people's meanness that might hurt or anything like that. But um, it's hard to do sometimes. We mess up. We can't help but to sin. We might get annoyed. And um, I don't know. I don't know. Yo. Yo. I do know about God and Jesus. I don't know about the other stuff, but everything I just said, I know before that was, was I know what I'm talking about with God and Jesus. You can be at peace with God and Jesus. It, it may be difficult here and there, but God only gives us as much as we can do on our own, unless it's like for some people who it's too late and they, they, they're in hell. You know, they, they, they end up in hell. But on earth, God only gives us as much as we can do on our own. It's not that bad. And if we really can't do it, we can ask God and Jesus for help. And it should be okay. Um, well, I'm going to go. Okay, bye. Dear God and Jesus be with us. Dear God be with us on earth. Amen. Help us do your work on earth and be okay uh, when possible and do your work on earth. That's what you want us to do. And uh, Okay. And be good and kind to others. and Not be led into temptation. Not be tricked by the devil into sin. Not uh, do too much sin. Try to be kind to others and suffer for the sin we have done. Has a chance to say we really didn't mean to do that. Um, and hopefully to God we get to feel okay too. Amen. Okay. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, bye.